Okay, let's solve this radical equation. And uh, this term here, radical, sometimes we like, oh, this is radical. It might be extreme. Maybe that's what this word radical means. No, that, that's not what it means, okay? Uh, back in the 80s, for those of you who are old enough to remember, there was this word called rad, which was, uh, hey, that's rad. Everyone would say, that's rad. And it kind of meant cool. But uh, that's what it, uh, this doesn't mean that as well. Okay, so this is not cool or not extreme, but actually it is kind of cool uh, mathematics. All right, but the word radical means a square root. Okay, so for those of you out there, when you see this symbol, that's a radical. Uh, you, most of you out there might say, oh, that's a square root. Well, it is a square root, but if I have a little a little three up right there, that would be a cube root. But uh, this is this symbol is a radical. So we're dealing with a radical equation. And radical equations um, require us to get into something called extraneous roots. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to solve this particular um, problem. But I'm also going to explain the concept of extraneous roots because that really uh, seems to bother students. But we're going to clear that up any confusion and really get you to understand this in just one second. But uh, first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive online video-based math help programs there is. So whether you need to take a full math course or you need um, help in your current math course, my program can help you. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, I'm a huge believer in math notes, just over decades of teaching mathematics. And one thing is for sure that I've uh, seen those students who take great math notes uh, do great in math. Okay, that's pretty solid rule. And the reverse is true. Those students who uh, have poor math notes or unorganized, sloppy, or no math notes, you're going to struggle. So if you're learning mathematics, take a look at your notes and ask yourself, hey, can you do better? Because if you can, you need to. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. And uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into this problem here. And... Uh, of course, I'm going to solve this, but first I want to talk to you about this concept of extraneous solutions, right? because it seems to bother a lot of students. So let's talk about this equation here. Right, let me draw this a little better. Um, x equals 8. So if I told you to solve this equation, you might look at me and be like, what? Uh, like, isn't it already solved? And you would be right. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing to do here, right? So that's already solved. And then you would be like, hey, I don't have to do any work and be happy about it. But uh, so, yeah, this is a very simple, like super simple equation. X equals 8. It's already done. It's already solved for us. But remember in algebra, that little rule that says um, we can add or subtract or multiply, divide, um, anything. We can do anything to an equation. As long as we do it to both sides, we'll be okay. So, for example, I can take this equation and add 1 to both sides, okay, and I get the new equation, 1 plus x is equal to 9. Did I really harm this equation? No, because I can solve this equation. I could subtract 1 from both sides. I get back to my original equation, x equals 8, okay? So, again, uh, when it comes to solving equations in algebra, you know, as long as you, whatever we do to one side of the equation, as long as we do it to the other side of the equation, you're not going to harm the equation, okay? In other words, you're going to, it's going to, whatever new equation like this guy right here is going to be equivalent, all right? It's going to be an equivalent equation, so we're just fine. So this is when, it, when we're talking about adding or subtracting the same value from both sides of the equation, we're okay. But we run into a, a situation where if we say, well, what happens if we square both sides of, an equation. Is that okay? Well, yes, you can do that. But when you do this, you can get you can get uh, what we call extraneous, extraneous, I'm, I'm going to expel this wrong, I'm sure, extraneous roots or solutions, okay? And the root word here is extra roots or extra solutions. There's no guarantees that you're going to get extra solutions, but you, you can't, you can't, can get extra solutions. It's possible. So when we square both sides of the equation, we oftentimes need to do this in mathematics. But when and anytime you do this, you need to be on alert. You need to be looking out for these guys. And we'll talk about how 
to check for extraneous solutions. But let's just kind of toy around with this problem here. So I said, okay, I got x equals 8. I know this is x equals positive 8. But if I squared both sides of this equation, I would get the new equation, x squared is equal to 64. Okay, 8 squared, of course, is 64. So I said, well, solve that equation. You would say, oh, okay, just take the square root of both sides. Okay, hopefully you know how to do that. And that would be x is equal to positive and negative 8 because the square root of a real positive real number is going to have both positive and negative roots. Okay, so x is going to be equal to a positive 8, and x is also equal to a negative 8. But by here, when I started off, my uh, only solution was x is equal to positive 8. So this is the solution. But this guy here, this root, is extra. This is an extraneous situation. So uh, I've got to throw this root out. Because x equals negative 8, if I went in and I plugged it into this equation to see if that was a, a, a real um, solution, it would be, I would replace x with negative 8. And I'd go, oh, negative 8, is that equal to positive 8? No, it's not. So I have to throw that out because it's extraneous. So this is a big, big concept that you need to understand when you're dealing uh, with radical equations. All right. Let's get into solving this problem now, now that you're an expert in extraneous solutions. So the first thing you want to do when you're solving a radical equation is to isolate the radical. And you can see I did the work here. What I, what I mean by isolating a radical is get the, the little radical part by itself. Okay, so we want to get the radical part by itself and a number on one side of the equation. So this is what we have to do. This is the first steps that we have to take, okay? You're gonna be focused on solving, if you will, for this square root, okay? You can think of that as just one big variable. For example, you're thinking, well, you know, you're only solving for this part. So in your mind's eye, it's like you're doing the same steps for this, 2x minus three equals 15, okay? And you were just solving for this, okay? So that's what we're concentrating on. We wanna isolate the, uh, the radical. So to do that, here I'm going to add 3 to both sides of the equation. I'm assuming you know how to do your basic algebra uh, equation solving steps here. So I, now I get 2 times uh, x plus 1 equals 18. Okay. So now just to isolate that radical, just divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, because I, I want to get this 2. Uh, I want that radical completely isolated. So now... I have that radical completely isolated right here. So it's going to be the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 9. So this is step 1, if you will. Okay, step 1 is to isolate the radical, and that's what we've done. Okay, now step 2 is to square both sides. Okay, now I have to get rid of that radical because I need to solve for x. So i got to get rid of that, that radical um, uh, operation. So the way to do that, I'm going to square that radical. Okay, when I square a radical, okay, or square square a square root rather, okay, that it goes away. So I'm just left with x plus one. But of course, I'm going to have to square both sides. Okay, so if I square over here, I'm going to have to square over here. And again, guess what? In you, your brain, you're like, hmm, I remember those extraneous roots now are possible. Okay, I'm going to be on the lookout for that. Absolutely. Okay, so we have 9 squared, that's 81. So x plus 1 uh, equals 81, and when I solve for x, I get x is equal to 80. Now, you have to be thinking to yourself, all right, this may or may not be the solution. Okay, we just don't know. It could be the a real solution. It could be what we want, or it could be uh, an extraneous solution. So how do we determine that? Well, there's one way uh, to do it, and it's really the only way to do it, is we need to take our our answer, okay, what we got there, and to determine whether it's an actual real uh, solution to this original radical equation, we're going to plug in this value, x equals 80, in for x, and then we're going to see how this pans out for us, okay? So in other words, we're going to see if this produces a true statement. So I'm going to replace this x with 80, and then I'm just going to do the math here. So 80 plus 1 is uh, 81. So 2 times the square root of 81 minus 3, is that equal to 15? So the square root of 81, of course, is positive, positive negative 9. 
We'll just use the, the positive version here. So 2 times 9 is 18. 18 minus 3 is 15. So 15 is equal to 15. So it checks. Okay. So that is a good solution. Okay. Now this part here of checking your roots, uh, oftentimes students think this is like an optional thing. They're like, eh, no, I got this. They'll stop right here. All right. And they'll be like, I'm done. All right. And... Uh, guess what? You're not done. Um, if you if you did all this and you didn't finish, I would be taking some points off. Okay, I would might take off five out of ten, and then you would be like this, and I and I would be like, hey, I'm sorry because you don't know if this is a solution or not. Okay, you need to check to see if this is extraneous, and it very well could be. Okay, if it's extraneous then there is no solution uh, to that particular equation. So you have to check. It's not optional. Okay, so there you go. Uh, radical equations, extraneous roots, all that good stuff. Again, um, if you're learning this, you have to practice this. Okay, so watching these videos, remember, it's a big difference between watching someone do math and you doing math yourself. So whether it's you trying to do this problem on your own by it's yourself or... Um, um, you know, practicing your homework or whatever the case might be, you got to practice in mathematics. Now, uh, one thing I'd like you to practice if you watched uh, this video or other of my videos is smashing that like button uh, if you enjoyed this video. Also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll become a subscriber. I only have hundreds and hundreds of videos that can help you out. Uh, various level of mathematics and are organized in various playlists on my channel. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.